So you meet the one, fall in love, get married, and live happily ever after. The perfect love story, right? Searching for your perfect soulmate is a mistake. Ditch the fantasy drilled into our minds in fairy tales and storybooks our whole lives? Yes, says Dr. Jacqueline Olds. Perfect soulmate puts a great big lot of pressure on the choice and on the looking around, even on the internet, where you think there are so many choices. And so it's much better to look for somebody that you have fun with, where from the get-go, you enjoy talking to them. Dr. Olds and her husband, Dr. Richard Schwartz, know a thing or two about love. Married more than 40 years, these Harvard psychiatrists study, talk, and write a lot about love, including in their book, Marriage in Motion, The Natural Ebb and Flow of Lasting Relationships. Close relationships uh, move like this, that you don't feel intimate once and forever with someone. You move towards someone, getting closer and closer at some point uh, uh, when you feel secure in that relationship. You manage to shift your attention back to other things in your life. Somebody has to have what they, we call the distance alarm, meaning that you have to have somebody say, well, you know, we've been drifting apart. Let's make sure we have some time alone together. But in a fast-paced smartphone world, sometimes swiping right seems simpler than putting in the work. As it's so easy to do these days, I'll go back on the internet and see what else is out there. A new mate is seemingly right at our fingertips, thanks to, well, frankly, too many dating apps to mention. There seems to be a disconnect between how apps are used and what single people want. Most single Americans say they want to get married and more and more of them are using dating apps. But most app users say they're online just to have fun. Something doesn't seem to add up. So you don't kind of meet people on the street or even in the supermarket. People are always doing things online. Technology and artificial intelligence are taking over what is arguably the most natural human emotion, leaving us more and more confused about love. You might love Valentine's Day. Or, like me, sometimes you might want to resist the Valentine's Day card and flower industrial complex. That desire to improve our understanding about love may have contributed to the success of the podcast Modern Love. The WBUR podcast was born out of the New York Times column by the same name. Meghna Chakrabarty is the host, Caitlin O'Keefe, producer. I think people need their faith in humanity restored, and I think that these stories really, really do that. We need that. We need moments where we're reminded of the importance of human connection and that it's possible. These stories are drawn from the Tiny Love Stories Project. I've tried to read <laughs> almost all the essays that have been published in the column. I'm always trying to pull out pieces that I think are exceptional, just really moving in one way or another, pieces that I think would work really well for audio. If both were alive, this would constitute a pretty serious problem. This episode is a story of a man finding love after the death of his wife. There's something profound about a human voice. You know, we grow up listening to stories, right? And so hearing a human voice telling you these most intimate tales is just, I think it's, it transports you. Where the listener ends up is a place of understanding, acceptance, and perhaps a mind and heart open to love. People are complicated and it takes time to really get to know one another. So in the modern dating scene, I just think it's tough. It's tough. So that's that's one thing I've learned, uh, but I also have learned at the same time, like there are more opportunities to connect with people. And true, lasting connection takes time. You observe somebody over time and get to like somebody over time. I think that worked the best. And you shouldn't feel like there isn't any hope if you haven't met somebody yet. And doctors Olds and yeah. Schwartz met more than 40 years ago Aww. and they met at work. And now they have two children, mm. four grandchildren, and they say, of course, relationships change over the years. The key is to embrace those changes, embrace those stages, and of course, find time for each other to reconnect. Always replenish and water the relationship. <laughs> Love advice from the creator of a dating app.